Hi everyone, it's Giga Beef here. Today we're going to be looking at solo raids on customs and how to fight other PMCs with low gear, what to do and ultimately how to get better. Every situation is different and experience is the best teacher so we're going to go through a couple of clips to find out what worked, what didn't and together we'll learn some ideas that we can put into practice in our own games. So stick around and let's get going. Alright, so today we're going to be focusing on a few topics. All of these clips come from recent solo raids that I've done, all of them are on customs and almost all of them are low gear. This is interesting because both cheap loadouts and solo play means we have to act in some very specific ways. We're outranged and fighting against full auto in almost every situation and at this stage in the wipe a decent number of people are wearing armour. I'm using an MP153 with AP20 slugs to complete a quest, but the principles are very similar for almost all low gear play. In short, we need to close the gap and get close, ideally without being seen, but if we are spotted, we really need to avoid getting hit. This first clip shows the importance of positioning yourself well. I had two situations that went very differently in the same location, both of which I had the advantage in. I knew that someone was about to come through this door, and so I was lying in wait. But if we look at how I'm positioned here, when they appear, their movement is going to be lateral, which makes it much harder for me to aim. I am no shroud and we have to make life easy for ourselves. I also didn't have my cursor position aimed properly at head height, which could have made all the difference in this case. Oh, should have killed that first guy much, much quicker to be fair. That was my own fault. Learning from our previous experience, I end up hearing someone else coming in exactly from the same direction on exactly the same map in exactly the same place. This time, I put us right at the front of the door instead, meaning that I don't really need to adjust my aim at all when they appear, which makes our life a lot easier. The next one's a quick clip about flanking and firefights. Here I see two guys and pop one straight away. The other just has a pistol, but given that I know where he is, he really should have run away and tried to attack from another angle, as when you don't, it makes it so easy for someone to kill you. I felt slightly bad about these guys, because the one was level 17 and bringing his level 1 friend in, and I assume that he's only just started playing the game, so I hid all their stuff. Learn from this, and always flank after an engagement. It'll save your life. Let's jump into the next situation. This was a pretty insane firefight that I had near the factory shortcut on customs, on the old gas station side of the wall. I take a few shots from inside the new warehouse and decide to investigate. We don't know specifically where they are at this stage, but we know that they're looking through this gap. I try my luck past the hole and take another shot so we know that they're still looking this way. The gap in the door is not quite wide enough to really see anything, so I flick past again to try and bait them a little bit more. I kind of wanted to run around to make them think that I could come in at any moment. Someone shoots whenever I come past the door. So there's not really much more we can do with this entrance, as it's basically suicide to go through there at this stage. Given they have an angle already, it's so hard for us to push in, and our gun puts us at a disadvantage already, so the chance of success is super low. We've got to try something else. I'm tempted to try going in through the back door, but once you're inside, it's really easy to spot you and there's nowhere to go, so I decide to give this one a miss and go around another way. There's a sneaky hole a bit further up here which covers most of our body. This highlights the importance of map knowledge, just to know that these things exist. When we check through, bingo, there's our guy. Now that we know where they are, I feel so much more comfortable going through the back, and when we go in, we see their silhouette. We're still too far, so we need to close that gap, but they don't know yet exactly what they're facing, whereas we do. Now that we're nice and close, we start to engage. As I start getting shot, I'm trying to use the pole as cover, so that I can duck behind it in between my own shots. This is the only advantage the shotgun really has over an automatic weapon, is that my shots are much more concentrated which means I can pop out and fire them one at a time, whereas I need to take a sustained burst from our opponent in order for him to kill us. Given we're now in the thick of the fighting, I take a painkiller which probably I should have done earlier. This is just to prevent us having any issues if we get shot on our arms and legs while we're mid-fight and can no longer hold the gun properly or run away effectively. I spend the next five minutes messing around trying to figure out how exactly I'm going to get up the staircase because there's only one way in. After spending some time moving back and forth, it's quite clear that he's not covering the stairs, so we move on up. Now that we're up here, we want a beta shot to actually figure out his exact location. I think he's probably at the far end, but we'll see. So there's two things that I'm thinking at this point. Firstly, that he has to reload at some stage, and secondly, what cover is in the next room to dive behind. Given how far he is, I'm not that bothered about grenades, as I think I'm probably out of range. I do want to shake him up though, and then jump around the corner to the next barricade when I think the time is right. Same tactic again, and we're another step closer. We're starting to become very dangerous. We score a hit as we can see the blood splash on the wall behind him. This is the time to push, as the guy will heal up otherwise, and this is our advantage when he's feeling under pressure. With footsteps behind, we have to go. Unfortunately, the firefight doesn't quite go as planned. I'm in 
So the steps that we heard from behind are quite clearly the player's squad mate, given that there was no firefight after they ran down the corridor. Oh my god. We catch a glimpse of him around the corner. A clean headshot takes him out, but unfortunately we get clipped by the second from behind the metal sheeting. We did everything right there tactically, outside of the shooting itself, and although we died, if we had something like an AK, it's quite likely that we would have taken out both players. If we can look back on our actions and be happy with the decisions we made, that's a win in my book. Five seconds before we continue, please don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. Alright, let's carry on. On the topic of flanking, in this next clip we spawn into customs up near the electrical pylon and hear a firefight on the Dormsway hillside. As we make our way over, it becomes apparent quite quickly that we're outranged in a significant way. There's one. There's another one. Time to flank! Swinging all the way around, being mindful of keeping hard cover between ourselves and where we suspect our opponents to be, we can get in much closer and stand a chance. Unfortunately, we get shot at straight away again and it's still not entirely clear where they are. So sometimes it's best just to rat it up and listen for sounds, especially with the kit disadvantage that we're running currently. We wait for a little bit, and lo and behold, as if by clockwork, one of them comes over to meet a face full of flechetti. Now is the point at which we should move and reevaluate. Our last clip is not really low gear, but I thought there were some interesting elements to showcase. There had been a significant firefight outside, which sounded like a duo fighting someone else. I was expecting someone to come from a different direction, but when the first PMC races into the building, he kind of catches me by surprise, but he goes in the other direction, so I don't try to shoot at him. Instead, we get the chance to line up a shot by predicting his path, but don't quite make the kill. On moving up, we hear running behind us, which is almost certainly their teammate, given that they took some shots. This perfectly showcases the advantages of grenades as area denial tools. People either have the choice of not entering for a few seconds, or potentially risking death. I have an F1 with me, which when thrown should buy us some time. With that we can concentrate on the main PMC. I like fighting around the edge of this container, as although my body is fully exposed, it gives me the flexibility to move in and out of cover if I need to reload and keep the pressure on. We take a quick peek to see if anyone else is coming after the grenade. Later on it turns out they did try to push in and got killed. Winner! One mistake I made was using painkillers too late, and it nearly cost me here as they get shot on my leg. No. Fortunately they give us enough space to pop a pill, and for some reason they move completely out of cover which is the end of them. If they'd held an angle here over the machinery bit, I think they'd have had a better chance. So that's all for today, please remember to sub and hit the bell if you want to see more videos like this in the future. You can also follow me on Twitter, and I stream on Twitch on Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturday evenings UK time. Until then, I'll see you next time. And as always, have fun in your raids.